did everything. All right, guys, today we're going to be doing the file metadata microservice that is used to basically get the file size. We're going to pass in a file, and then we're going to uh, be able to get the file size of it. In their example, they use an alert box. I actually just send back a uh, JSON response. You can do it however you want. Um, now, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. We're going to be using a multi dependency they recommend. Uh, most of what's going to be new uh, if you're not familiar too much with, uh, if you're familiar with Node and Express, is just this documentation and this middleware. Everything else should be kind of uh, familiar. It was my first time uh, working with a, having a view work with our backend. But let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by creating a folder. Let's just go open folder. We'll do uh, file size YouTube. Cool. Nice. Next, what we're going to do is we're basically just going to do the same setup that we always do, where we create, uh, we jump into the terminal rather. And from here, what we do is we want to uh, initialize npm. So get that going. Taking a second. Cool, so what we want to name this, we'll name it file size. Oh, I always forget that you can't do caps file underscore size. Version, description. Entry point is going to be app.js. A lot of people use server.js. It's really just a matter of what you prefer. Uh, let's go ahead and create our new file here, which will be app.js. That'll be where we put all our server information for Node. And then we are also going to have a file uh, for index.html. This will be our view, right? This will be where we'll have our HTML. This is, you'll see, this is where this is basically, our HTML layer. And let's jump back in. And that's obviously done. That's my done version, not the YouTube version we're at right now. So next what we need to do is we need to install um, four dependencies. We need to install Multer, we need to install Express, we need to install cores and we need to install body parser. Those are the f the, the first, the three minus multer I always install and then uh, multer for this, this project. So this is gonna be npm install, dash dash save, multer, get that going. And let's see, cool, you guys can see just fine. So that's gonna go it's going to install a bunch of stuff. Then we're going to do npm install, dash dash save. And that's going to be um, cores. And then we're going to do express as well. doesn't matter what order you install these in. Uh, let's just make sure you install all of them. And then we're going to do npm install, dash dash save, body dash parser. That's gonna go, and uh, that's what, three? And I believe we have Express left, and then we can get started. npm install, dash dash save, Express, and here we go. So how I normally start, and have, you probably should too, is just by going piece by piece, right? So uh, first you kind of set up your directory. Next what you do is you you um, instant you install all your dependencies, all your modules, um, and uh, from there, what we have to do is we actually have to require them in our app.js. So this should look pretty familiar. Var express is equal to require, and in here we pass an express. This basically creates an instance of uh, our imports. So. We're gonna do the same thing for, let's get rid of this index.html. Let's zoom in a little bit, now that we're not in the, there we go, get, get all right up in it. All right, so um, right here, we're doing express. We're gonna do the same thing for cores and body parser. I'm just gonna copy it over real quick, save us some time in this video. So we're gonna require those files. Uh, and uh, so this is normally how all my videos 
get going. And we're gonna do the same thing for Molter, where we need to require Molter as well. Just because we've downloaded it doesn't mean that we're using it, is kind of the way of thinking about it. Molter. Now, before we move forward, let's go ahead and uh, create an instance of our app. So, uh, the way that we do that, just create a variable called var app. It's equal to uh, module.exports, which is equal to express. Now, that's our instance. Next, we just have to say, look, we want our app to use body parser. Uh, body parser.json. This is going to allow us to output our JSON much easier. And then we're also going to use app.use. We're going to use cores so that we don't ever come across any um, cross regional errors. We're just going to make. We're avoiding issues right here and making this easier right here. So now that we've instantiated that, let's make sure everything is set up properly. The way that we can do that is just by saying app.listen. And where do we want to listen? We want to listen on our localhost 3000. That's our port number. This is going to have just a function, a callback function. Basically, what's going to happen is when we hit that localhost 3000, we want it to console.log uh, something just to know that our server is working. So we'll pass in working. Go ahead and save. And uh, I use Nodemon. I highly encourage you to uh, get it as well. But if you don't want to do it, you can always use um, just called Node and then instantiate your device. So Nodemon allows you, when you save, to auto-update your server. So give it a second here. All right, so where did we make up? Throwing an air. All right, guys, so it seems like I had something else running on port 3000. So uh, that's my, my bad. Uh, what I needed to do was just simply change this port number over. Uh, we did, and we can continue on now. We can actually go ahead and reinstantiate this multer. Um, learned a little bit about what's going on there. It looks like I didn't close the last thing that I was using on there, but everything's good now. Let's continue on. So what we were doing was we we're basically just doing the setup. Let's jump into our index.html right now, and I'm going to copy over couple things now I'm, I'm gonna assume most people are somewhat familiar with HTML if not hey man good look good job making it this far but uh, we gotta get, we gotta we gotta get you familiar so we're gonna have our body we're gonna have our our head all this sort of generic stuff that goes in there now what we need to do is we need to create our form input to do that we have to create a form so let's have a form, our form tag, not dorm tag. And let's go ahead and bring that in one more time. So in our form tag here, what we need are a uh, couple things. We need an action, we need a method, we need an encryption type. We also need two inputs and na a name for one of them. So to start off, uh, our form is gonna have an action and this is gonna be equal to, to slash upload. This will link to our post that we're gonna create in just a second. So in our post, we're gonna have app.post, and we're gonna have a couple things that go in here. The first thing is going to be that, that URL, like so. Uh, let me comment this out for the time being. We'll continue on with that in a second. So that's the first thing that we need. The next thing that we need is the method. What type of method is this form supposed to do? Is it a git? Is it a put? Is it a delete? Is it a post? What's it supposed to do? So that's our method. In our, in our example, as I just said, it's a post. Now, the next thing we need is an encryption type. This is um, for multer. In order for this to work, you have to put in this tag, multi-part form data. This is just part of the documentation. This is what you need. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create a label. We're, get, we're about to move on to our inputs, right? So let's create a label, make it look nice. Um, we'll just say this is for, and I, I just happen to name it file. Um, so this is for our file. Uh, um, please, that's nice. Please select a file. So that's our label. Let's go ahead and create our file input. So we have our input, and the type of this is gonna be equal to file. And then the ID is equal to file. 
Uh, we don't actually need an ID for anything, but it's a good convention. Typically, you want your inputs to always have IDs because they're going to be unique. And that, But this is what really matters right here. It's the name. The name is equal to file because this name links up with this label and then also links up with our post to, in order for us to get uh, the next step of this, next uh, input, we have this middleware um, that's going to basically take in a variable that we're going to define right now called upload. So we'll call it var upload. And this is going to be um, equal to uh, multer. And then uh, we're going to pass in an object. And des, this, uh, this is all in the documentation as, as well. And we'll just do des uploads slash. Now what's going on here is we're basically just instantiating an instance of Multer. And in order for us to upload a single file and get what's in that file, we're gonna, we're gonna get back the file size, we're gonna get the file type and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, the way that we do that with our post, according to the documentation is we take that object and we say, look, we wanna upload a single file and then you pass in that name parameter. Remember I said this is gonna be important. So this is how it gets this. And then we pass in our traditional function where we have the, the rec, the rest, and the next. And this is our, uh, basically our post call. So this is our multer and we're saying, look, get a single file. The file is connected to the name right here. And did I, did I leave anything out? Oh yes, uh, we also need a submit button. So we need a way to say, hey, we're ready to actually do this post. We can do that with the input, set the type equal to submit. Save that, and let's go to why we're, uh, we'll, we'll check that out in a second. So uh, this is all we need to do in our HTML, pretty straightforward. Now, uh, we're gonna run into an issue where it doesn't de detect this, because we're, we're working on the localhost and we need to, and there's no like linking of files together really. Um, so the way that you fix this in a bootleg way, I'm gonna show you the bootleg way, uh, if you will, and then I'm gonna show you the actual way that you should do it. So the way that we can get it so that it detects our HTML page is we're gonna pass in a git call that's gonna take in a function and it's gonna have rec, rest, and next. And then we are going to uh, basically says res, let me copy this over, res.send file, all that this is gonna do right here is basically send this file to with this directory name. Now this only works for single files. So that's why I call it the bootleg way, but it will work for what we're trying to do. So if we try to go to localhost uh, index.html, it'll work now. So let's go to localhost, and this is now 4,000 slash, uh, let's try that localhost 4,000. So now everything works. This wasn't gonna work beforehand. And I believe if we take this out, don't make me a liar, I'm doing a video. It shouldn't detect it. See, we get this cannot get. It doesn't know what to get. Um, so let's go ahead and put this back in here. So, why do, so how do we do it if we don't wanna do it this way, right? Uh, kind of the, the much better way uh, using Express is to create a folder um, for what I've been told, kind of the standard way of doing it is creating this public folder. And what you do is you put everything in there that, that's gonna need to be created. And then uh, we are going to use this statement right here. Go ahead and put it right below here. App.use express static direct name slash public. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna work similar to this, except uh, basically everything that's in this public directory, everything that's in this uh, folder is now accessible. So instead of having to do 10,000 app.gets, we just do this one statement uh, and go from there. So let's go ahead and save this, make sure everything is working. Do a refresh here. So everything's good to go. Cool, so how do we actually we, we've, we're basically there. All we have to do now is return our upload. So how do we do that? Well, uh, you just do return and res.json, our response. And this is basically gonna JSONify, if that's, JSONify is the word, I believe. Uh, uh, the request.file, so what we're passing in and the file information. 
So now let's go ahead and refresh this. Uh, we're going to choose a file. Uh, what do we want to choose? We will choose my logo here and submit it. And you'll see we get all this file information here. We get uh, the field name, what we called it, right? Um, this file, the original name, logo square.jpg, the encoding, the MIME type, the destination, the file name, the path, and finally our size, which was the whole point of this. Um, well, the whole point was really get you comfortable with connecting your HTML, I think, with your with your server. But uh, this is the this is the uh, file metadata microservice. Pretty cool. Get you introduced to Molter. I imagine that this is one of the more common modules to use for easy uploading and things like that, and uh, how to work with files. But as always, guys, thank you for watching the video. If you want to join our Facebook group, I highly suggest you do. It's Code Tech and Caffeine. The link is in the description below. Look to our weekly interviews with developers and those tech professionals I love to interview on Fridays. And if you want to support me, you can at you at youtube.com slash coding tutorial 36 is a good place as well but uh patreon.com slash coding tutorial 36 yeah i appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video hey guys thanks for watching the video if you're interested in coding boot camp check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and support me on patreon i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching